Hello everybody and welcome to another Linux or Programmers tutorial video. In this video, I'll be covering the grep command. Now the grep command is extremely useful, it's used very commonly, and it actually exists in pretty much all Linux distributions. Now what grep allows you to do is search for a pattern of specific text in a file, in console output, and in a bunch of other things as well. Now it's very useful, there's a ton of different uses for the grep command, and as like all of the other videos, this is just going to be kind of a brief introduction to it. You will have to do a little bit of your own research and, and find out a bit more about the grep command because I really just can't cover everything in this one video. So with that said, let's dive in after a quick word from the sponsor of this video and this series, which is Linode. Now Linode is the best company to use when you're hosting a website, app, or some service in the cloud. If your app runs on Linux, it will run on Linode. And Linode has great support 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. As I've mentioned, I have been a customer of Linode for over two years. I love their service. I use them for all kinds of different projects, and I just love that they have cheap and affordable servers that I can use for some basic hobby projects too, and I don't have to kind of break the bank if I just want to get something spun up and use it for a few hours or a few days. So anyways, claim your free $100 credit towards Linode by clicking the link in the description. And one last reminder to make sure that you sign up to get access to the last five videos in this tutorial series. This is video 10. If you want to see the other five videos and you don't want to have to wait for potentially a long time, then make sure you sign up at this platform. Again, there will be a link in the description. Now, lastly, there is a text guide for this tutorial video. This comes from Linode. This is a very helpful guide, talks about a lot of the things I'm going to say in this video, and just as kind of a cheat sheet for some of the syntax and regular expression syntax and all that. So anyways, make sure you check this out. There will be a link in the description to that. So with that said, let's talk about the grep command. And actually, before I do that, I want to quickly show you what I've set up here on my system because I've created a bunch of files and a large text file that we're going to use to kind of test out this command. So I'm in this folder called files. And if I ls, you can see that I have a bunch of files created here. Now, I've also created another file. This one is called grep.txt. And inside of here, you can see that we have a bunch of text. And you don't have to worry about the contents of this text or anything like that. You don't have to recreate this. Just understand that I've generated a ton of text and a bunch of empty files. I just wrote a really basic script to do this. So we had some kind of meaningful output for our grep command in this video. So anyways, let me show you grep. So the syntax for the grep command is simply grep a pattern and then a file that you want to search for this pattern in. Now this is kind of the most basic usage of the grep command. You can also use this to filter console output, which I will show you in a second. And you can do a lot of other things with it as well. Uh, but specifically, if we wanted to search for a pattern in a file, then what we would do is we would type the pattern. So let's say I want to look for the pattern, which is a and I want to find that in the grep.txt file. I would type grep a grep.txt hit enter, and this is going to show me all of the lines that contain this pattern on it. So let me go back here. Let me just clear the screen and I'll explain this more in depth. So this is the command that we just ran. So what this is going to do is it's going to find the pattern A in this grep.txt file. And whenever it finds this pattern, it's going to print out the line in which this pattern appears on. Now notice I keep saying pattern. The reason I'm saying pattern is because we're not just searching for this absolute text we're searching for a pattern. We're going to match whatever pattern we type here, which can be a lot more advanced than this, with all of the text in this file. And if we ever find a match, we will output the entire line in the file that contains that match, even if only part of that line was the actual match. So for example, you can see here that only A is what's actually matching, and that's highlighted in red, but we're showing all of the lines in which we actually find A, right? And you'll see that some of the lines, we have two matches because there was two A's. So just keep that in mind. It will show you the line in which these matches occur. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, what grep will take or what it will look for is a regular expression pattern. Now, I'm not going to get into depth about regular expressions because they're very complicated and there's a lot of stuff that you can show, but I will show you some very basic regular expression syntax or, or patterns that you can write so you have an idea of what I mean. So if I type grep a and then period, what this period means when this occurs in a regular expression pattern is that we're going to match any character or any symbol with this period. So when we talk about the pattern a and then period, what that means is we're looking for anything that starts with a and then has any other character afterwards. So you'll see when I run this that we get Z and then a and then any other character, right? And we have all other letters and then 
A and then any other character because we're looking for A followed by any character, right? Now, if I change this and instead I say A dot A, what this means is we're looking for any pattern that starts with A, has any character and then ends with A. So now when I do this, you can see that these are all of the patterns that we get. So a dot matches any character or any symbol. Just keep that in mind because that's probably the most useful one or the most common one that you will use. Now, another one that you can use is these square brackets. Now, what these square brackets will do is look for one symbol or the other. So if I type A comma B and then dot A, what this means is look for anything that starts with A or starts with B. That's what it means when you're inside of these square brackets, then has any symbol and then ends in A. So if I run this, notice that we get a bunch of stuff that starts with A, that starts with B, and that has any other symbol and then ends with A. So that's what that pattern did. So I just need to take a quick pause and thank the other sponsor of this video, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the best platform to use to prepare for your software engineering coding interviews. And I actually work there as an algorithms instructor. So if you want to check out the questions I've created on Algo Expert, head to the link in the description and use the code tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. So now I'll show you a few other things that you can do with grep. So let's go back to our command here. So let me remove this. Now, usually when you do a regular expression pattern, you're going to put it inside of quotation marks. The reason you do this is because there's some symbols that you type that will just kind of be messed up or interpreted incorrectly if they're not inside of quotation marks. So keep that in mind. If you're getting some types of issues when you're doing your regular expressions, just just put the expression or the pattern inside of quotation marks. Anyways, the next thing I wanted to show you, though, is the or operator. So if you want to search for one pattern or another pattern, then what you do is use the or operator. So the or operator looks like this. It's a forward slash and then a pipe. At least I think that's a forward slash. I don't know if you call that one the forward slash or the backslash. Someone can correct me in the comments. But regardless, you put a pattern on the left hand side and a pattern on the right hand side, and it will look for either of those patterns. So if I want to look for a dot B or I want to look for B dot A, then I would do this and it's going to show me all of the patterns that match either of these. So we're looking for a pattern that is this one or the other one. Hopefully that's clear, but that's the or operator. There's a few more things that you can do as well. I don't really want to get into it a ton, uh, but you can match the beginning and the end of lines. So for example, say I wanted to look for a B and then I wanted this a B to actually be at the end of a line. I would type a B and then the dollar sign. And what this means is match this pattern here. So a B with the end of the line. So when I do this, it's going to find all the a B's that are at the end of the line, not at the beginning of the line. And of course, if a line is just a B, it would be at the beginning and the end of the line, but you get the idea, right? So it's just showing you once at the end. If I only want to match the front of the line or the beginning of the line, I use this little hat. So that's what's above the six or shift six. So grep hat and then a B. And what that does is show me all of the a B's at the beginning of the line. So you get the idea. These can be really complicated. You can make very advanced regular expression patterns. Again, not going to get into those too much. That's all I wanted to cover. So now let me show you a few more options that we can use with the grep command. So first of all, sometimes you don't just want to know the line that this pattern is on, like the contents of the line. You want to know the line number. So if you want to know the line number, what you do is you type grep hyphen N standing for the line number. That's pretty much what it means. And then you are going to type your pattern. So maybe we'll do ABC and then the file. In this case, we do grep.txt and we see that line 32 is what has the pattern ABC. Now, even if we did say a B and then dot, this will show me all of the uh, all of the line numbers for all of the different patterns. So that's pretty helpful. Now, there's another thing that you can do, which is hyphen O. Now, what hyphen O will do, and I believe this is a lowercase O, not an uppercase O, is it is just going to show you the matching pattern, not the entire line. Now, sometimes like I don't know why you would exactly want to do this, but Sometimes you don't want to see the entire line. You only want to see the pattern that matched. So for example, if I were to type a B and we didn't have this hyphen O, notice how it's showing me all, all these other characters before it. If I didn't want to see that and I just wanted to say C A B, then what I would do is I would put hyphen O here. So grep hyphen O A B grep dot txt. And now it's only going to show me the pattern. It's not going to show me all of the letters before that. Now, this is kind of a poor example because, you know, why would you want to do this? Uh, but for example, if we did a dot, now we'll see just the pattern, right? We won't see all of the uh, all of the characters that are not a part of the pattern, but are on the same line. So hopefully that's clear. 
Uh, that's what hyphen O does, just shows you the matching pattern. Then if you type hyphen C, and this is uppercase C, and then you type some number, this is actually going to show you lines after the matched pattern. So say I wanted to see like four lines after the matched pattern. Now what I would type is grep hyphen C, four, and then we'll go A and then dot and then A. And now it's gonna show me four lines above and four lines below the matching pattern, right? So it shows it to me on both sides. And so I had misexplained that previously, but it does show you on both sides of the pattern. So this way you can kind of see what's around it. Now you can imagine that would be useful if you're searching for something in like a Python file or in some you know programming related file because you could see maybe the block it was nested in and stuff like that. So that's kind of the basic uh, commands and options for the grep command. Of course, there's more that you can do with it. And the more you know about regular expressions, the better you're gonna be with grep. But what you can also do with grep, which is really useful, is you can search for files, you can look in directories, and you can filter the output of a command. So the most useful one is filtering the output of the command. So I'll show you that first. So if I type the ls command, and then I type the pipe, and then grep, and then the pattern that I wanna search for, what this will do is it will find this pattern in this output. So ls has some output, right? So ls command will run, and then grep will search through the output of ls and show me all of the matching patterns. So if I say ls, and then grep, and then ab, it's gonna show me all of the file names uh, that match that pattern. Now, it's kind of confusing because my uh, grep.txt and my file names have the exact same thing. But remember, if I go ls, I have a bunch of empty files. So what I did was I did ls and then pipe and then grep and then let's just go lh. And now it only shows me files that have lh in them, right? And I can use the same pattern I would use previously. I could match the ending of the line. So I would do lh like that. And now it only shows me files that end in lh. So you can use this on any command. You don't just have to use it on ls. Uh, for example, we could say like cat and you know grep.txt and then bar and then grep and let's say a, B, and then dot, and notice it's gonna give me the same thing, right? It's gonna filter the cat command, uh, the output of the cat command, and, and just give me all of the matching patterns. So another thing that we can do with the grep command is we can actually search a bunch of files at the same time. So for example, I just have changed my directory, so now I'm inside of this directory, my home directory. Notice we have abc.txt, a.txt, ab.txt, abcde, right? So let's just nano into abc.txt, Let's add an hello and let's escape. Let's nano into a.txt and let's add an hello and escape. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cd dot dot and I'm gonna look inside of this entire directory. So inside of my entire home directory and find all of the strings that are hello. So what I'll do now is I'll just type grep hyphen r, hyphen r stands for recursive. So if you wanna look in an entire directory and search all of the files in a directory, you do hyphen r. Then you do the pattern you want to look for. So in this case, I want to look for hello. And then I want to look in what directory? I want to look in the home directory. Now, I think this is just called root, actually. Let's do grep hyphen r hello root. And now it's going to show me all of the strings hello in any of the files that are inside of this root directory. So notice inside of test two, we have hello a bunch of times. Inside of ABC, we have hello. Inside of vim info, we have hello, right? So you get the idea. That's what it's showing us. So that is kind of the idea behind how grep works. You can use it to search for text inside of a file. You can use it to search for text inside of a directory. So it looks through all of the files. You can then output commands or you can then filter commands using grep. So you saw when I typed cat, I could filter that. When I typed ls, I could filter that. And there's a whole bunch more uses for grep as well, but super useful. And again, definitely something that you need to know and be comfortable using. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you in the next Linux for Programmers tutorial video.